In this lesson, we're going to talk about the cardiac cycle and how blood is pumped throughout the body. Before we get started, I want to go over a couple of really important points. These are terms that you really need to know. And the first one is called systole. And what systole is, is the contraction of whatever chamber we're talking about. And then you need to know diastole, which is going to be relaxation of that chamber. And then you have to know something called diastasis. And what diastasis is, is it's the pause between a relaxation and contraction. And if you want to talk about... Um, anything atrial related or anything related to the atria, you have to say atrial before it. So if you're talking about atrial, so you're talking about contraction of, of the atria, you have to say atria systole or relaxation would be atria, atrial diastole. If not, it's assumed that it's considered ventricular. And when we're talking about the cardiac cycle, we're going to look at the atria first. This is called ventricular diastole. And the ventricles are relaxing and blood is coming in from the, uh, from the vena cava. And uh, so it's going to be coming in from the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava. And it's filling blood in the right atrium. Blood is going from the right atrium into the right ventricle through this tricuspid valve. On the left side, you have blood pulling uh, in from the pulmonary veins. And it's going to go into the left atrium here. And... When it goes in the left atrium, it's going to go into the left ventricle. And there's going to be this pause, and I'll show you here in just a second. So you have pause, and we'll go through one more time. Pause. And this is the diastasis that, that I was talking about in the previous um slide. And what's going to happen is during this pause, these ventricles are going to fill to about 70%. And then the next phase is atrial systole, and this is where both of the atria are going to contract simultaneously, and this is known as atrial kick. And what happens is during atrial kick, that the remaining 30% uh, of those blood in those ventricles is going to get filled up. And now we're talking about atrial diastole, so both atria are going to relax during, um, during this phase, and what happens is you're going to have the squeezing of the ventricles. And with ventricular systole, both of these ventricles are going to contract. It's going to cause this increase in ventricular pressure. These bicuspid and tricuspid valves, you can see it here. I'll show you. And when they squeeze, they get smaller and they close. And that's going to uh, be uh, supported with the papillary muscles. And they're going to close and it's going to prevent backflow from the ventricles uh, back into the atria. So that's when, the, so those, those doors, if you will, those close. The pulmonic and aortic valves, I'll show you, this is uh, your pulmonic valve here, and it opens, and uh, all the blood's going to leave the ventricles and go to their respective areas. Now, there's going to be a small amount of blood and that, that are going to remain in the ventricles, and this is known as EDV, or in diastolic volume. And then what happens is once the, once the blood is out of the ventricles, the pulmonic and aortic valves are going to close, and then it's going to prevent backflow this way from uh, the pulmonary artery or the aorta back into the ventricles, and then the cycle is going to start over. So I know we talked about the different uh, valves opening and closing, and this is actually what creates your heart sounds. And there's a really good heart sounds lesson I encourage you to check out, and it's going to cover those needs in depth, more in depth. But when you're talking about heart sounds, these are the things that you need to know generally. S1 is the systolic sound. And it's going to be a long duration and a low pitch. And you're going to hear the ventricles contract and these atrioventricular valves are going to close. During uh, S2, this is going to be the diastolic heart sounds and the ventricles are going to relax and those, uh, the semilunar valves are going to close. Now, you also have abnormal heart sounds that you may often hear. There's two that we look at, which are stenosis and regurgitation. Stenosis is uh, like a, it's a narrowing, basically. And the reason that it narrows is because there's either, either a fusion. So if this is your, imagine that this is your uh, valve here. Now imagine if these edges got fused, it's, it's not going to be as pliable. So blood isn't going to, uh, it's not going to relax as much and allow for normal passing of the blood. So you're going to have blood passing through a smaller opening than normal. You also can get these things called vegetations where they're essentially like a little gross right along the um, the valves, and that's going to create a smaller opening, and it's going to create this murmur or a whooshing sound. Then you have uh, regurgitation, which is different. So if 
this is your atria and this is your ventricle and you have this is your valve what happens is is that you're going to get blood that's supposed to go this way what ends up happening is because this valve doesn't close all the way it actually ends up going backward now this is that ba that backflow or the regurgitation you can have uh regurgitation from the right ventricle to the right atria you can so if this is so this is your right atria this is your right ventricle this is your left atria and this is your left ventricle uh you can have it go from the right um from the right ventricle to the right atrium you can also have it go from if this is your pulmonary artery or a pulmonary um yeah your pulmonary arteries um you can either go from the pulmonary artery back through that pulmonic valve. That could be another one. Uh, you can also have some that go from the aorta. So this is your aortic uh, valve. Uh, it can go back from the aortic valve to the left atrium. And this is going to be your second most common type of uh, regurgitation. Or you can have it go from uh, the left ventricle back to the left atrium. And that's going to be your most common type of regurgitation. Okay, so let's recap. When we're talking about the different terms that you need to know, we'll talk, first look at systole and diastole. Systole is a contraction and diastole is a relaxation of whatever chamber we're talking about. Don't forget about diastasis, which is that pause between the systole and the diastole where the ventricles are going to fill up to 70%. When we're talking about valves, these are going to be your doors and those doors are going to remain open between the chambers during that filling phase. Your normal heart sounds, you have S1 and S2. Your S1 heart sounds are going to be your tricuspid and mitral valves. And your S2 is going to be your semilunar valves. So these are going to be, this is going to be your, um, your pulmonic valve and your aortic valve. Then you have abnormal heart sounds. And that's either because inco of incomplete closure, um, and that's going to create your, um, your regurgitation, which goes backward. Or you're going to have a narrowing which is the stenosis. Thanks for watching another nursing.com lesson. Click the link below in the description to watch thousands more lessons over on nursing.com. Also, be sure to hit the subscribe and the little bell to make sure you're reminded when new lessons come out. And if you wanna just keep watching more lessons, go ahead and click this video over here to continue learning. Like we always say here at nursing.com, happy nursing.